Hi guys, we're back at the Festival of the Arts to try more of the food I didn't try before. So we are here now currently at the first of the best foods we're trying today, and that's the deconstructed dish. Uh, there are two items that with modifications can be made gluten-free, so I'm going to give both of those a try. Uh, just about up at the counter, uh, it's the just deconstructed BLT and the deconstructed key lime pie. Yeah, you have to leave off the brioche from one and you have to leave off the graham crackers from the other. Uh, so I'm going to give both of those a taste. Uh, and again, I have my toast from the other day. No, it's not fresh toast, but it's toast. That's why I got it toasted. So it won't be stale, it'll be toast. Uh, and we're going to give them a try. I'll tell you what everything's like. So we have the key lime pie and the deconstructed uh, BLT. Sorry about that. So what I'm going to do first is start on the BLT because that's the hot food. The picture of it will go right here. There is unfortunately no knife. This thing really needs a knife. I'm kind of ripping up some pork belly now. And I'm gonna crack open the poached egg, which, there's the yolk of the poached egg. Oh well, so they cooked it too long. Um, take some of the tomato jam, some of the espuma, some of the yolk. Oh, that's good. That's really good. It's not obviously in a. It's not in the um, exact option. Oh, and of course I forgot my toast. So remember, this came with a brioche originally, and because I can't eat the brioche at the resort yesterday. I had them toast, at the quick service, gluten-free bread. Now again, keep in mind, this is... Now I don't get the oniony flavor that the other one would add, but this allows me to reconstruct the deconstructed with a little of everything on it and eat it. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Great idea. Um, the bread is, an is not a necessity, but wow, these flavors are awesome. Okay, so the next one we're doing is the deconstructed key lime pie. What it's missing is the graham cracker, which I'm hoping will be okay, so it's got a meringue. It's got some oddly shaped lime curd, some raspberries. Um, Key lime mousse. That's good. That's really good. Even without the graham cracker. And I, I can tell where I'm missing that graham cracker flavor, but awesome. Both of these for the win. Highly recommend. Yeah, good stuff. All right, I'm gonna eat these and I'll talk to you when we get to our next food. Okay, so now we've got three new dishes. We have the risotto modified without the sauce the bone marrow modified without the bread, and the beet carpaccio modified without the bread. And of course, as you remember, I brought my own bread. So we pull out the happy and hunky dory, you are recording this, happy and hunky dory bread again. I might actually have more bread than I need, but you know, that's okay. I have bland toast for going home. So we're gonna start with the hot dishes first. So first is the risotto. It's got a beautiful, uh, pictures will go in right here. It's got a beautiful chunk of uh, Parmesan, some mushrooms on top, truffles I believe. Mmm, oh, oh good. Great mushroom flavor. All right, I'm gonna say as amazing as this is, I'm gonna stir it up, because I want that cheese to melt a little bit. And right now it has enough heat, because of the rice holding in the heat. Oh, and I can already see it starting to work. Yeah, so I'm gonna let that sit for a minute, and while that happens, we're gonna get the bone marrow. Now, I've never had bone marrow. Um, scoop it out of the uh, center of the bone. Cold mushrooms on top. Very vinegary flavor to it. There's green herbs on it. I'm scooping it out. Some mushrooms, some beautiful mushrooms. Some beautiful herbaceous. I'm gonna drop some of the herbs on it too. I think a watercress there. I'm gonna try this. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah. Now we're safe. The bone marrow actually kind of does need the bread because it's just kind of gooey on its own. But when you add the bread to it, it really ups the flavor profile. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Last but not least is the beet salad. It's got sliced red beets, very thinly sliced, golden beets. So it sort of looks like sort of looks like the way you would do a prosciutto. Oh my god. Well that mustard is awesome. This is so good. Um yeah. If you like beets, of course. So there's this sort of a stone ground mustard with it and some greenery. If I hadn't already put the picture in, it's going in right here. Mm. The mustard makes the dish. Now, again, they did say, have it with bread. So, I'm gonna take half of one of my pieces of bread and try it like it would be if it was a slice of meat. And... I'm sorry, ibises, I'm not feeding you. They're ibises by my feet. Hmm. Now, doing it that way it does tone down the mustard a little bit. And I wish I had the actual crostini because that crunch would be a nice change because the rest of the other food is softer. That's still good. These these are all wins too. Now the bone marrow is probably an acquired taste, so it's not for everybody. And I'm really basically grabbing a spoon and scooping it out, and then putting it on top of the bread. Um, and then you've got a lot of internal bone pieces, I guess, everywhere. It's all right. So some of this is not coming off. All right, I'm gonna fight with my food here, but um, these are all tasty. I would I would recommend these. You know. If you like mushrooms, if you're into um, strong, nice, earthy and, and flavor, this, yeah, this is good. If you're into flavor, there you go. Yeah, really nice. I'm gonna finish these up. No, wait. Before I finish, let's see what happened with the uh, melting of the cheese. Not enough melting, but it's okay. Yeah. That's a good truffle risotto. All right, I'm gonna finish these up. We'll talk to you with the next booth. Normally, so you'd have Christini on the one. You'd have paint bread on that one, and then there's a little bit of a reduction, you can see, of red wine, Zinfandel. Those are the only things I couldn't have. So we are here at the Tangerine Cafe. Um, I had a bunch of modifications, because I actually can't do chickpeas as well. The first thing we're going to try is the lamb kebab, lamb kefta kebab. That picture will go in right here. And they had to take the chickpea salad off, so I can't tell you anything about that, because that's one of my allergies. But... It's a lamb. Grilled, kind of blended lamb. Um, nice spice to it. That's gonna burn. Yeah. I would love to have gotten the chicken salad. I have a feeling it would brighten it. It's good. All right, now we're trying the carrots, three ways I see pureed, uh, julienne, and then roasted, I think. There's some lovely greens. Picture will go in right here. And we've got. And this was literally being made. I watched the guy making it as I came up. Okay. Again, nice spice. Like an actual like heat spice. Um, it's front of the tongue spice, it's not back of the tongue spice. Um the julienne carrot or the um the thin piece that was cut, marinated in vinegar. And then the puree. Sweet. Oh that's nice. I think they might is that honey? That's, I think that's vinegar. Yeah. This is very tasty. Tons of flavor. Tons and tons of flavor. Um, the last thing, of course, is the chai mint mimosa, the Twinings tea, with champagne, uh, Prosecco, I think they said, but nice little drink. It's nice. It's very light, because you've got that tea, you've got the, it's the kind of the back palate, but it's very fresh. 
and it's not tons of alcohol, it's just a little Prosecco. On, on a cold day like this, it's probably nice to warm me up. And these are awesome. I'm gonna eat them because I don't wanna take up a whole lot of table space right now, but um, let's see if, uh, let, let's see, yeah. If you like spice, if you like seasoning and a lot of flavor, I would do these. Um, I, I'm sorry I can't tell you more about the, uh, I didn't get the chicken, there's a, a harissa chicken as well. So I'm sorry I can't tell you a whole lot more about this. Um, yeah, I mean the mayo's okay. You can see inside. All that seasoning. I almost, I almost would be okay with this without the mayo. And probably, actually, hold on. I bet, well, I'm gonna go change the room, but I bet that would have been really good with my gluten-free bread. Just slide it off like a sandwich, like a souvlaki. But, tasty. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is, this is good. There's a nice variety here. A lot, a lot, a lot of flavor. So, let's see if we can uh, finish this up. And hopefully I'll check in with you at the next booth. We are now inside, uh, just outside of Italy. Now, I can't eat any of the food in Italy, but they had bergamotto, which is a bergamot-based, bergamot uh, liqueur-infused drink. So, you know, please come on up. You, it's not an Epcot festival unless you're drinking over a trash can. Yeah, yeah. That is what I've been told. So, drinking and eating into trash cans, here's to Epcot's Festival of the Arts. Have a great day. Have a great day, and let's try this. What, what fried risotto balls? I get fried Ooh, okay, ooh. It's all supposed to have something olive in it. Okay. Not super sweet. You've been feeling some kind of way. Have you washed your So it's got this... It's the beginnings of what would be a honeyed flavor, but it's not honey. Um, but it's got that, uh, as I took out my tongue, but that mid palate kind of almost creaminess to it. And again, a little bit of upper palate. That's a hair of citrus, but not much. And I think that's the bergamot. This is unusual. Very late again, Prosecco. I'm going with the sparkling drinks. They're cold, but they're not slushies. And it is still not over 50 degrees. It was supposed to get up to 59. Actually, originally when they were looking at the schedules, it was going to be into the 60s. It hasn't even broken 50 today, which means this is about the temperature it was last night. At least there's light. I can't say the sun's out, but there's light. It is cold. Um, I'm really missing that Christmas hot toddy because wouldn't that have been nice? But this is a lovely drink, a nice thing to try. Uh, the bergamot liqueur is a clear liqueur, so no problems. And um, yeah, buen appetito. Ciao, ciao thing was an olive liqueur but I realized that's an olive at the bottom so I was finishing up the drink and I went I, I'm, I'm gonna do this on camera I don't know if it's gonna be any good but we're gonna try it so it was the bergamot liqueur and the Prosecco and an olive so give me a sec doesn't want to move mm-hmm Olive and pit. And it's not a salty olive. It's still got that kind of butteriness that you expect from olives. What a neat surprise. Yeah. That was an awesome twist. Oh, now I've got just this mm, buttery, olivey taste in my mouth. And yum, 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 yum. It's not salty at all. You know, you think of that super salty, like Kalamata olive marinated up. Mm. Oh, it's like just fruit. Awesome. I'm glad we got to share that. Okay, so we are getting to the end of the experience. Uh, now we are at the, the it's a seafood booth. I'll get the name of it and I'll try to put it up in the comments if I can remember. Um, but we got the mussels. Uh, it is modified. They took the bread off of it. You know what that means. Pulling out my bread. That sounds wrong. Uh, also, at that booth they had a trout that supposedly if you admitted the bread or something on it would be okay. Well, what it is is you have to take everything off of it. It will literally just be a piece of fish. I didn't want to spend the money on just a piece of fish when all those flavors and toppings are what really would have made it. So now we have mussels in a sauce. Now, the woman was very sweet, the chef. 
she was trying to make sure that you know we had a completely clean one and um, as the thing was empty she's getting the next container of it from the sh from the new the chef is cooking them and he puts it in and she's like you know I want to do this because it doesn't have you know I might have put my fingers in the bread put it in there and she goes to do it and the guy puts in the the mussels and then takes the water from the old one which is what she was trying to avoid and dumps it right into the stuff so she moved everything to the side you know it was like the last few that were there etc ah well but again I'm not celiac your mileage may vary. Mm, okay. So they need to put the sauce on it, which is a tomato sauce. And I'm going to take the shells out and then I'll put them all back at the end. Nice flavor to it. Nice, nice kind of savory, tomatoey flavor. Again, no crostini. All right. I'm going to watch the artist next. Perfect timing. The only so I didn't get the trout because I just didn't want to have plain fish, you know. Um, the carne asada I think is the only thing I have left to try. Out of all the dishes that can be modified or changed, I cried. I didn't take a picture, did I? Let me do that now. If I did, great. If I didn't, the picture will go in right here. Um, but. Uh, I'm going to my list of what I wanted to try while I was here as I try not to drop my socks. Oh, I did not get the pate because I don't like pate. So I didn't want to, unless unless there was some you know desperate reason, I just didn't why get something that I'd have to modify and not have it be something I like. You know what I mean? So oh, I tell you. I like today's foods better than yesterday's, although I did like a few things yesterday for sure. Um, yeah. We're going to be getting one more dish and then we're done. Oh, and the chicken harissa I didn't have because I had the lamb kebab. Okay, so we are gotten the celebratory stardust, which is a berry acai or an acai creamy drink. Uh, covered in sparkles. I don't know if you can see the sparkle sugar there. They said there are no gluten containing ingredients, but of course they can't can, uh, guarantee cross contamination. This is at the Joffrey's over where they're doing the construction right across from uh, Mission Space. So just to, for perspective, right there. Um, so I'll tell you what to think. It's a lot like a berry yogurt. It's good. like drinking a berry yogurt. Well, we're going to finish it, and we'll see you later. If you guys have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and like the video. Share this with your friends. Let them know about what kind of content I do. Share, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, hit the thumbs up, and that way you know about everything that's happening. And, um, I don't have a tagline, but I got a monorail! But I don't have a tagline. Don't have a tagline. Singing hey ho, a maiden's life, one, two, three. Hey ho, a maiden's life, won't you drink with me?